landmark ruling, the Supreme Court today legalized abortion. The decision to end a pregnancy during the first three months belongs to the woman and her doctor, not the government. By a vote of seven to two, the court agreed to uphold three of four restrictions on abortions in Pennsylvania. Developing tonight, new fallout after the Supreme Court issued one of the court's most sweeping decisions on abortion rights in more than a decade. Do you believe, no, but, in, but you're, do you believe you're, in punishment for abortion, yes or no, as a principle? Uh, the answer is that there has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah, there has to be some form. Ten no, cents, ten years? I don't what? know. That I don't know. That well, why I don't not? Know. I don't you know. You take positions and everything else. I Frankly, I do take positions and everything else. It's a very complicated position. But you say I'm bluntly pro you're pro-life, meaning you want to... Kentucky's only abortion provider won't have to close on Monday. A federal judge granted a temporary restraining order yesterday. Workers at the center in Louisville say they received a letter out of the blue on March 13th from the state's Cabinet for Health and Family Services. It said the center would lose its license. The center and the ACLU filed a lawsuit to block that closure. President Donald Trump today signed a measure to end federal funding for Planned Parenthood and other groups performing abortions. Meanwhile, in Minnesota, lawmakers are approving a series of abortion restrictions this year, despite a veto threat from Governor Mark Dayton. Here's Pat Kessler. The slate of abortion bills represents some of the most aggressive anti-abortion action at the legislature in years, including a ban on taxpayer funding of abortions for women on medical assistance. A new push to put restrictions on abortions. The Senate Judiciary Committee voted along party lines to advance a bill that would ban abortions after 20 weeks. The current law bans abortions after 24 weeks. Ohio Governor John Kasich will soon decide whether or not to sign his state's so called heartbeat abortion bill into law. The measure was approved yesterday. Would outlaw abortion once a fetal heartbeat can be detected? That can be as early as six weeks into a pregnancy. Now, under that guideline, the law would also ban abortions even in the case of rape or incest. Democrats in Ohio have slammed the measure, calling it unconstitutional. If it is signed, it would be one of the strictest abortion laws in the nation. facing a 20-week abortion bill um, that was introduced into the uh, PA House last year and already signed on for co-sponsors this year. Um, and so that we know that they will move to do that again this year. I know with Planned Parenthood and looking at our funding and our ability for preventative care, um, that that is something that we are really concerned about is what happens with our Medicaid funding um, when you take away preventative care and the issues that we'll have um, for those who uh, don't have access to preventative care. We are the only family planning clinic in a lot of rural areas, and so if you take away um, people's ability to come to us, it's a really privileged thing to say they'll just go somewhere else. You know, Ohio is ranks along with Mississippi as having passed more anti-abortion access laws than virtually any other state. You know, you don't think of Ohio in that in that vein, but it is, and we're far from the only state that's way that way. A controversial abortion bill called the Heartbeat Bill is now sitting on Ohio Governor John Kasich's desk. 
Ohio state lawmakers approving legislation banning abortions the moment the heartbeat of a fetus is detected. That usually happens about six weeks into a pregnancy. Republicans have tried to get the heartbeat bill passed before without success. This time, House Republicans tacked it onto a bill dealing with reporting child abuse. And if you're thinking, how is that possible? Well, it's in no small part because the key Supreme Court decision concerning abortion is no longer Roe versus Wade. It's the 1992 Planned Parenthood versus Casey ruling that said states can create restrictions as long as they don't place an undue burden that places an, a substantial obstacle in the path of a woman seeking an abortion. Meaning women can be asked to jump through a few hoops, just not too many. The vagueness of that ruling has allowed states to introduce dozens of what some have called trap laws, or targeted regulation of abortion providers. Though their supporters, to an eerie degree, all characterise them somewhat differently. This is really about um, uh, the issue of women's health. We're protecting women's health and safety. We are protecting women's health. I just wanted to reiterate that this is really all about protecting the health and safety of women. Trap laws are targeted regulations on abortion providers used as a way to curb abortion. But some people feel uncomfortable using the word abortion, so instead, let's explain this with apples. To better understand today's targeted regulation on apple growers, let's go back to 1973 when the Supreme Court decided on Roe v. Wade. So women were granted the basic human right of determining whether or not they wanted to eat apples. Then in 1992, there was another big Supreme Court case, Planned Parenthood versus Casey, which said yes, women can legally eat apples, but states can regulate the way they eat them to protect the health of the eater. So people who wanted to govern the way women ate apples found new and creative ways to curb apple consumption like weird regulations on how apple orchards could operate. This meant a lot of apple orchards had to close, making it geographically super challenging for many women to find apples to eat. Life counts. <laughs> Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now. Nobody has the right to kill an, un an unborn human being for the sake of whatever reason they may want to. Ohio, you cannot come in and have an abortion on the day of your first appointment. You have to be seen by, the, by a physician at least 24 hours before you do a procedure, either medical or surgical. So today, in the early part of the day, we have five or six women who came in previously. It may have been earlier this week, it may have been last week that are coming in for their procedure. Um, then later in the day, we'll have people coming in for what we call their consultation, which is their first visit where they come in, have their ultrasound, talk about their options, decide whether they want to schedule a procedure for one of our other days. The problem is, is that means people often from far distances have to miss a day of work. Often they don't have a ride, they have to bring somebody, drive them up here then they go home and then they have to come back again another time, which is often a very big burden for someone who, you know, is already financially stressed. I personally think a large percentage, a large percentage of women deciding on having an abortion tends to be on finan for financial reasons. So now they have to miss another day of work to come up here. Many of them are driving two to three hours, you know, and so that extra day mm -hmm. causes a problem for them. Hey, Carrie. Hi. Um, I know I said that I have to take uh, Tuesday off, but I also have to take Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah, I know that it's unpaid. All right. Okay, thank you.
Who are the women who obtain abortions in the United States? You might be surprised. Almost one out of every three American women will have an abortion by age 45. They come from all walks of life. They are women you know. Most women having abortions are in their 20s. Many people mistakenly believe that teens are the group most likely to have an abortion. Teens actually account for fewer than 2 in 10 of all abortions, and most of them are older teens, those aged 18 and 19. 6 in 10 women having abortions already have a child, and many have two or more. They know what it means to be a mother, and they often cite the need to care for their children as a primary reason for deciding not to have another right now. Three out of four women who have abortions describe themselves as religiously affiliated. Catholic women have abortions at about the same rate as women overall. Over the past decade, abortion has become increasingly concentrated among poor women. In 2008, more than four in 10 abortion patients had incomes below the federal poverty line. That's a huge increase from a decade ago. cuenta. ¿Fuiste al doctor, Xiomara? Oh, um, remember when I had the stomach flu a few weeks ago? To clarify, Zoe didn't have a stomach flu a few weeks ago. She had a medication abortion, which caused cramps, which she told her mother was a stomach flu. I know how upset you are about the choice I made, but I made it, and it's done. You're in that mood, huh? You, you want a Chardonnay? You know I can't. Oh, it won't hurt. You're only a little bit pregnant. Oh, right, because we only had a little bit of intercourse. You uh, sure you want another baby? There are options, you know. We just won't mention it to Father Broad. He won't tell God. Scott, I'm a married mother of two. Okay, those options are for teenagers the month after winter formal. White women account for one in three abortions, more than any other group. However, women of color are disproportionately likely to have an abortion. The reason is that black and Hispanic women have much higher rates of unintended pregnancy. These trends reflect widespread inequities in other areas, not enough access to contraception and to quality, affordable health care, and not enough educational opportunities and good jobs. These broad social and economic inequities must be addressed. But at a minimum, contraception should be easy to get and use for all. And comprehensive sex education should be available to all adolescents. But while prevention is key, there will always be women who need abortions. That's why abortion is basic health care for women. This morning, Arizona lawmakers have approved a new birth bill. It would require doctors who perform abortions to try to do everything possible to save the life of a baby born alive during an abortion. Now on your side's Carlos Herrera it joins us now with details about the new measure. Carlos, it's stirring a lot of debate. It, uh, it is, Pat, and the Senate approved the measure on an 18 to 12 vote, and now it moves to the House. It requires doctors to use all available means and medical skills to try to save the life of every newborn if it is breathing, has a heartbeat, and is moving. It would also require hospitals and clinics providing abortions at 20 weeks or beyond to have medical equipment on hand to care for a fetus delivered alive. 
Protesters in Texas are taking on bills aimed at decreasing access to abortions in the state. A group of women dressed in red robes and white bonnets showed up on the Senate floor Monday to protest multiple anti-abortion rights bills. The clothes were a tribute to The Handmaid's Tale, a book and upcoming Hulu show. The story talks about women being reduced to, quote, walking wombs because they have to bear children for upper-class couples who can't conceive. If passed, Senate Bill 415 would ban a common procedure used in second trimester abortions. Those behind the bill have called the procedure dismemberment abortion. A showdown at the Capitol, and tonight a major victory for pro-life advocates. Let's get right to News Channel 5's Chris Conti. Chris, another day of contentious debate. It was a debate that lasted for the better part of an hour, Rory. Law lawmakers have been sparring over the bill, which limits abortions after 20 weeks. Today, it all came down to a vote on the House floor. Lawmakers' days at the state capitol are quickly coming to a close. This is my body. I make that decision. But that does not mean they are going away quietly. We are focused on the, this. The amendment, sir. And I rise to be a voice for the unborn. For months, legislators have been debating the Tennessee Infants Protection Act. The bill would make it illegal to get an abortion after 20 weeks if a fetus is determined to be viable. It First on Fox this morning, Republicans are one step closer to repealing and replacing Obamacare. The new GOP bill narrowly passed through the House yesterday, 217 to 213. 20 Republicans voted against the plan and no Democrats supported it. Now, if the bill does become law, it would change the way health care works.